If you're thinking about going solar, you've probably heard these two terms thrown around. Microinverters and string inverters. What are they? And what's the difference? Most importantly, which one is right for you? Choosing the wrong inverter can mean losing money, missing out on production, and most importantly, missing out on those long-term savings. In this video, we'll be breaking down how they work, the pros and cons, and what the best choice is for your system. By the end, you should have a good idea of which inverter is the best one for your needs. Let's get into it. Your solar panels produce DC power, but your home actually runs on AC power, and your inverter is what makes that conversion happen. Here's the key difference. A string inverter is a single device that does that power conversion for your system at a single point. A microinverter is a small device that attaches to each solar panel and does the conversion right at the panel level instead. These small changes can actually make a big difference in terms of performance, reliability, and cost. All right, let's break it down. Does it work here? Solar panels are wired together in a single lane or string. With a string inverter, if one of those panels underperforms, then it will affect the performance of the rest of the panels in that string. Much like in rush hour traffic here in LA, when you've got one car that slows down, it slows down all the rest of the cars behind it as well. So these types of things can reduce the performance of the system by causing a bottleneck where the rest of the system has to adjust to match the performance of the lowest performing panel. String inverters are lower in cost Cost, and they can also be easier to maintain because there's only one device that needs to be addressed versus having one on each panel. But things like shading, dirt, bird poop, can all affect or slow down the performance of your solar panels. On many string inverter systems, per panel monitoring is also not possible, meaning you can see the entire array performance, but you won't see the performance of each individual panel, which can really come in handy when you're trying to troubleshoot. Warranties are anywhere between 10 to 15 years on average, while most solar panels are warranted to last at least 25 years. So while string inverters may look more attractive cost-wise up front, it could wind up leading to losses down the line in terms of lost performance. On the other hand, microinverter systems fix these issues by allowing each panel to adjust according to its conditions. So for example, shading on one panel won't necessarily affect the rest of the panels in that same string, instead allowing each of them to adjust individually to the one panel that's underperforming. You also have the benefit of seeing the real-time performance of each individual panel. So microinverters, which have a longer lifetime, typically come standard with 25-year warranties instead. Now here's the shocker. Microinverters can actually be cheaper than string inverters. To get similar performance to microinverters, string inverters have to utilize a device called an optimizer, which is attached to each individual panel. However, even when adding optimizers, all of the adjustment and calculation that the system can do must still be done at the main string inverter unit. They are not happening at the panel level unlike microinverters. Adding optimizers to a string inverter system can bring the cost to be equal with a microinverter system as well. String inverters still need to be replaced roughly anywhere between 10 to 15 years, unlike microinverters, which will typically be rated to last the entire 25 year lifetime. Another thing to consider are repairs. On a string inverter, when that fails, your whole system isn't producing. Whereas with microinverters, if you have one or two that may require replacement, the rest of the panels are actually still working and producing energy for you. When it comes to installation, there is more complexity when it comes to installing microinverters because you are attaching these individually to each panel. However, it would be the same if you were to add optimizers to your string inverter system. Considering all the factors that we've discussed, this is why most homeowners today still opt in for microinverters versus a string inverter system. If you want the cheapest upfront cost, a string inverter is probably going to work best for you. But if you're looking for more stable energy production performance over time, detailed monitoring monitoring and easier troubleshooting when something goes wrong, you're going to want to get a microinverter system. String inverters are cheaper up front, but they can create bottlenecks due to the way they operate. Meaning one weak panel can drag down the performance of your whole system. Plus, if you're looking for performance that's even close to a microinverter, you're going to need to add an optimizer, which also increases cost. Microinverters can give you more stable energy production over time, better monitoring, plus a longer lifespan. Despite being higher in terms of upfront cost, microinverter systems can actually give you a better return on your investment over time simply through better and more stable production and a longer lifespan. All in all, there is definitely room for both string inverter systems and microinverter systems. For most customers, it really just boils down to cost. If you've got a very straightforward 
install situation with minimal shading and obstructions, a string inverter system is a great way to go. However, if you need that flexibility and would like to have both better performance as well as more insightful data, then microinverters, despite being higher up in cost up front, would be the smart way to go. If you're thinking about going solar, let's make sure you get the best system for your home. Click the link in the description below to schedule a free consultation with Formi Solar. Our team will help you compare options and design a system that will help you save the most money. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more tips, and leave any questions in the comments below. What are your thoughts on microinverters versus string inverters? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.